you hear the news, you read the headlines, you read the reaction from Facebook. Who do you believe? Um, I, I'm not sure. Uh, you know, the verdict is out that Facebook is not to be trusted with your data. The counterparties, which said that they had access, some of them were surprised, in fact, that they had access, saying that they never really used it. Uh, at, at, at first, you have to believe them until it's proven that they actually use the data for something else. But is the issue that they didn't use it or the issue is that they gave them access to? Meaning, they could have used it. And, and, and God bless them for not using it if they didn't. Um, sure, the issue is that they give them access to right. it, thinking that that data would then be used in ways that would then go, come back to, to Facebook and benefit Facebook, I'm assuming. Um, again, Facebook has proven time and time again, particularly this year, that they just cannot be trusted with your data. They, they'll, they'll sell it, they, they'll you know, lend it to people, people will do things with it, you don't know what it is. Uh, Guy, if, if Eric's right, if, if Facebook can't be trusted with your data, uh, what's the repercussion on the business? The bigger picture is you should assume your data, for what it's worth, is out there and you shouldn't really quote unquote trust anyone. I mean, basically you have made an agreement. You're using a quote free service and nothing in life is free. So if you're using a free service, it's going to be ad based and if it's ad based, they're going to mine your data. So one choice you have is not to use free services. And you know, that's reality. Is that a fair trade though? Meaning is it a fair trade to, to, to use the free service for the amount of data if you don't know that the data is being used the way it, it apparently has been? Well, th therein lies the rub, right? That you know, at least you should make a conscious decision. Yes, I'm using something free, so they're gonna use my data. And then you can make a decision. And I think if nothing else, this controversy uh, is bringing that to light. I don't, I don't think there's going to be a world where Facebook is going to fix everything, all these social media services are going to fix everything, so you can truly be confident that you know, nothing is leaking, nothing is out. That day is not going to happen. Eric, one of the things that I think is getting looked and overlooked in all of this is this idea, whether it's this report or some of the other ones we've seen more recently, about this idea of almost preferential treatment in terms of the access to data that some of the other big tech companies seem to be getting or seem to have gotten from Facebook. Is it, how should we think about that too? Because it, it almost seems like an opportunity where the bigger tech companies have been able to get bigger. I think it's very concerning, and if, if in fact data is the new oil, as, as people have been saying, then you, you, you might be seeing a new oil cartel of big tech companies that exchange massive amounts of data among themselves, excluding all the newer companies, the small startups that don't have access, and therefore AI and machine learning and predictive uh, computing can only be done with massive amounts of data and that leaves all the small companies out of it. I think that that's something to, to be concerned about. Eric. Guy, here's the, here's the problem as I see it. Facebook for years, uh, since its founding, pretty much put forth sharing and open information as being this global benefit. It was good. Uh, if people mm -hmm. shared more, it was going to be great. If more data was out there, if you could share things with your friends and gave other companies information about who your friends were and authorized that through Facebook, it would be good. They didn't consider the downside. That's part of the issue with this Russian meddling. It's back. It's the issue mm -hmm. with this. Now they're trying to say we've changed, and yet, I mean, I don't understand exactly the mechanism through which Yahoo, Microsoft, BlackBerry, and others got access to this data. They say they didn't use it, but are they sure that some employee didn't tap into that and run off with data? I, I don't know exactly how this gets handled. God, does that have to become a lot more explicit? I, I, well, listen, there's no downside in being more explicit and more open and more transparent. At least people should be able to make the intelligent decision. But having said that, you know, I, I, I love the quote of Eric, you know, that's going to go kind of viral that this is the new big oil, there's a cartel, there's the, uh, you know, the OPEC of data. But man, from what I know, you know, people like Google and Facebook and Apple hate each other. They're not sitting around there, you know, price fixing stuff. So I think you don't need to worry that much. But basically, it's just greater awareness that um, your data is out there. If you don't want to participate, fine. But if you do participate, know that there are risks and then make an intelligent right. decision. Don't believe everything you read. In fact, believe nothing okay. you read. 
here's my question for you, Eric. When you get off the set, let's just hypothetical. Mark Zuckerberg calls you on the phone. He says, "I just I just watched you talk about talk about us as an oil company as part of a cartel. I need your advice. I'm not going to fire myself. I'm not going to fire Sheryl Sandberg. What do I do? What do you, you actually tell him to do?" Okay. Um, if anybody tries to change their privacy settings on Facebook today, I defy them to be able to do this in a way that's reasonable and within a, a reasonable period of time. So the first thing to do is make your uh, privacy settings really clear at the top of the page and make it really easy for me to change. And I think that will be, go a long way towards giving people some form, some form of comfort that in fact they do care about your data. Okay, Eric Hippo, the ringleader Ask of that, me the, the information cartel. <laughs> hey, Guy, what, you had an answer? What, what would you tell him? We I run, would tell him, Mark, add a paid version of Facebook where you absolutely promise that it's a subscription-based model and we will do nothing with your data. Okay, Eric and Guy, thank yeah. you. But, but it doesn't work, is, is my problem with that, is because if my wife has different privacy settings than I do, they all know where I live because they know where she lives and they know we're friends, they know people we know in common. So individual privacy uh, settings aren't the answer. They gotta come up with something different. It's, it's tricky. A US GDPR.